it could be really symmetrical. So. <laughs> okay, so thank you all for being here today. Um, it's a good chance for all of us to announce the next phase of this, the uh, It's On Us legislation. And there are a number of pieces of legislation that we all want to talk about today. But I'm proud to be joined by college students, by the national leader of the It's On Us campaign, and the legislative champions in the battle to protect students and make our campuses safer for everyone. Combating sexual assault and violence must be a priority for all of us. In January 2016, Pennsylvania became the first state in the union to have its own It's On Us program. And it built on the national the movement of the same name that was started by President Obama uh, and then Vice President Biden two years earlier. Since starting our own statewide It's On Us, it's on us movement, my administration has awarded more than $5 million to colleges and universities all across the Commonwealth for programs that are aimed at preventing sexual violence. Sexual assault does not discriminate. It can happen to any person at any time. And it has a corrosive effect on any person it happens to and any place where it happens. It is estimated that one in five college women are assaulted. Eight in 10 survivors know their attacker. And 40% of survivors fear reprisal from another attack. Sexual assault and harassment are simply unacceptable. And we cannot accept a culture in our colleges or in our commonwealth that allows sexual violence to continue. And here in Pennsylvania, we are doing something about it. In 2019, I worked with legislators and advocates to pass two bills to strengthen the It's On Us organization and movement in Pennsylvania. Now, post-secondary institutions are required to offer online anonymous reporting of sexual violence and harassment for students and for staff. And students who have the courage to step up and report sexual violence and assaults are protected from getting in trouble for violating any other school, drug, alcohol, or whatever policy. And I want to thank all of our legislators here for that support. And I also want to thank all those who have stood up in support of It's On Us in every checkpoint all along the way. getting in trouble for violating any other school, drug, alcohol, or whatever policy. And I want to thank all of our legislators here for that support. And I also want to thank all those who have stood up in support of It's On Us in every checkpoint all along the way. Children are being taught how to recognize healthy and unhealthy relationships. New legislation will require schools to give preventive education to students so that they can identify and prevent dating violence, sexual assault, sexual harassment, 
and stalking. Studies show that middle and high school students are at the greatest risk of dating violence and sexual assault. The National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey shows that sexual violence actually starts very early, with one in three big female victims experiencing rape between the ages of 11 and 17, and one in four male victims experiencing rape before the age of 10. This is a tragedy, and we can stop it by giving students the tools they need to recognize and identify harmful and dangerous behaviors relationships and situations. I want to thank Representative Jessica Benham and Senator Judy Schwenk for sponsoring this legislation. Thank you very much. Fourth, we must ensure that we have the tools, resources, and information to further our fight against sexual violence. New legislation will direct the Joint State Government Commission to study the effects of sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking on students in grades 6 to 12 and in our post-secondary institutions. This comprehensive approach will help us gather better data to identify effective prevention efforts and to explore how we can improve our policies and our practices. So I want to thank Representative Carol Hill Evans and Senator Vince Hughes for sponsoring this legislation. Thank you, Chair. Pennsylvania has made a lot of progress in combating sexual violence and harassment in schools, but again, we need to do more to ensure all of our students are safe. So these four pieces of legislation are the next step forward for Pennsylvania and for our students. We can protect students, build a better commonwealth by doing these things. Again, ensuring that yes means yes, affirmative consent at colleges. Second, strengthening protections for victims of crime on campuses. Third, protecting and preparing middle and high school students to understand and stop violence. And fourth, gathering data to improve and find new ways to protect students and make progress. I want to thank all the legislators here today for your support of It's On Us, for helping to make us better in Pennsylvania in this regard, and I urge the leadership in the General Assembly to take quick action on this legislation. Take it up for a vote, bring it to my desk, I'm going to sign it. Because when it comes to stopping sexual assault, it is in fact on all of us to do our part. So thank you, and now I'm going to turn this over to Tracy Bitchers from It's On Us, National Executive Director from Northeast Pennsylvania. Tracy. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Governor Wolf, for having me here today. It's really been an honor to be able to continue our impactful partnership with the state of Pennsylvania and my home state. As colleges and universities across the nation have welcomed back students to campus this fall, many for the first time since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, what experts feel would occur has terrifyingly become a reality. The beginning of the undergraduate academic year has historically been known as the quote unquote red zone because it's when more than 50% of all of the sexual assaults that will occur during the school year happen between the time when students arrive on campus for freshman move in day and when they leave for Thanksgiving break. First year and transfer students are typically most likely to be victimized during this time because of their inexperience with college life and campus party culture, an absence of a tight-knit social circle who will watch out for them, and students who are willing to be predatory. This year was already predicted by experts to be a quote-unquote double red zone because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Institutions of higher education reopening after a year of remote learning have welcomed a new class of freshmen to campus. These freshmen have also been joined by students who are academically sophomores but are more like socially freshmen because they quote unquote zoomed their first year of study remotely. Combine two classes of students who are new to campus with returning juniors and seniors anxious to make up for lost time partying and socializing with friends and colleges have a crisis of sexual assault on their hands. What is deeply disturbing is that colleges and universities were very well aware of this threat, but in large part were not motivated to do anything to prevent it. Right here in the Commonwealth, we have seen the inaction on the part of colleges come to bear. Penn State University Park was forced to issue campus safety warnings after a string of forcible sex offenses were reported to the university officials. As of October 13th, Penn State University Park reported 13 sexual assaults. And we know that the number of actual sexual assaults that occurred at Penn State is likely higher given that 90% or more of sexual assaults that occur on campus are never reported to the institution. 
It is with this information in mind that it is urgent for the Pennsylvania State Legislature to move to pass the four pieces of legislation presented here today to hold our schools accountable to keeping our students safe and their rights upheld if violence happens. For example, the Yes Means Yes bill would require colleges and universities to adopt affirmative consent standards and ensure all students have the right resources and support they need after an assault, regardless of where they go to school. Similarly, the bill that would require K-12 students to know and prevent, to teach them to know and prevent dating violence and sexual assault is crucial to ensuring safe learning environments for students. Educating K-12 students would not only make our elementary, middle, and high school safer, but it would also have the long-term effect of making our college campuses safer, as Pennsylvania students heading off, to, heading off to higher ed for the first time would have a baseline education on sexual violence prevention. Prevention is possible, but only if we invest in educating our students in age-appropriate ways on sexual violence. We also cannot take steps to bring an end to the public health crisis that is sexual assault in schools if we do not know the depth and breadth of the problem, which is why I'm deeply supportive of the proposed legislation that would establish a task force to study sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking in middle, high, and secondary schools. Last, but certainly not least, it is crucial that we amend the Crime Victims Act to extend protections for victims of crimes on campus, including sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking. Student survivors deserve to know what their rights are and how their school and other local resources can support them in their pursuit of healing and justice. These bills would fundamentally strengthen the rights of students and require colleges and universities as well as K-12 schools across the Commonwealth to do better by our youth and young adults. I'm proud to stand here today with Governor Wolf, Pennsylvania students, and the legislators who will carry these bills in the Pennsylvania legislature. By passing these critical bills, we will make strides to prevent sexual assault and protect the rights of students across the Commonwealth. I am now pleased to introduce an incredible student advocate whose passion for this issue is unparalleled, Justin Ashampong. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate you all being here today, and thank you for the space to speak on behalf of the Every Voice Coalition PA chapter, abbreviated EVCPA. My name is Justin Champong, and I'm a student at the University of Pennsylvania, and I am coming to you today as the co-state director of the Every Voice Coalition, a nonprofit organization working to empower students to push people in seats like yours to make change around sexual assault on college campuses, change that we've been needed for years but have been neglected. However, I also come to you as a brother, an older brother, an older brother of two bright, talented, sweet, kind-hearted siblings. The eldest goes to college next year. The next goes to college in three years. I'm excited for them to experience what I have been able to, the freedom, the new ideas, the academics, the clubs. But I'm also terrified, terrified of what they will see, what they will experience, terrified that they'll inherit the same problems the same traumas that other college students have been experiencing for decades, the same problem that students have been organizing around for years, the same problems we've been screaming about from the top of our lungs, but that over and over and over and over again have fallen on ears that will not listen. Yes, history does seem to repeat itself, but you can break this cycle. You can be the ones to listen to students to survivors and to push for change that we need to keep our campuses safe, my campus safe, my siblings' campus safe, your descendants' campus safe. Campus climate surveys are a necessity if we want to start developing these safer campuses. Right now, universities are only required to publicly report and display reported and convicted crimes. However, only 90% of sexual misconduct crimes are ever reported making this data massively unrep unrepresentative, allowing schools like Penn State to report 151 instances of sexual misconduct, which is about 0.165% of the school student population, when according to their most recent campus climate survey, that students have had to fight to be released, one fourth, 25% of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence, which equates to about 24,696 students, which is very much not
children are being taught how to recognize the fight to be released one fourth 25 percent of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence which equates to about 24,696 students which is very much not Children are being taught how to recognize healthy have had to fight to be released one fourth 25 percent of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence which equates to about 24,696 students which is very much not children are being taught how to the fight to be released one fourth 25 percent of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence, which equates to about 24,696 students, which is very much not. Children are being taught how to recognize have had to fight to be released. One fourth, 25% of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence, which equates to about 24,696 students, which is very much not. Children are being taught how to have had to fight to be released. One fourth, 25% of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence, which equates to about 24,696 students, which is very much not. Children are being taught how to recognize to be released. One fourth, 25% of undergraduates in 2018 experienced some instance of sexual violence, which equates to about 24,696 students, which is very much not supposed to be the best years of my life. Uh, instead, I spend my free time running the state chapter of a nonprofit to fight campus sexual violence and to support survivors. This pain has gone on far too long. So we students have taken on the burden of fighting sexual violence when that should not be our responsibility. I am a senior in college and I'm here on a Monday afternoon when I should be in class to emphasize the urgency of this movement and the fervent need for this legislation. I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to be here today. We've known for years that sexual violence is a problem. A 1985 study found that one in four women had experienced sexual violence while in college. A 1987 study found that 7.7% 7 .7 of college men admitted to attempting rape and none of them saw a problem with that. Daily Pennsylvanian articles from the 1990s read like articles from today. Campus sexual violence isn't new. And yet here we are today, when rates of sexual violence are actually increasing. One in 10 students, including one in five women, experience sexual violence during their time at college. More than 40% of survivors suffer from PTSD and over a third are forced to take some kind of leave of absence, transfer, or drop out. 10% leave school altogether. The cost of inaction on students is immense. Every Voice Pennsylvania exists because students have taken the initiative to create the safety and support they need and don't currently have. Across the Commonwealth, student survivors and allies are coming together to raise awareness around this issue and to advocate for prevention and protection at the state level. One piece of that is the Yes Means Yes Affirmative Consent Bill, HB 1489 and SB 730. The Yes Means Yes Bill takes common sense steps to improve the programs and resources that already exist for fighting sexual violence. Incoming students already receive initial training in sexual violence prevention, but this bill would simply update the language to make the content of those trainings more modern and effective such as by teaching students about affirmative consent. Even more crucially, this bill would require institutions of higher education to communicate with their local rape crisis centers to ensure that students have access to the resources already being provided there. 
These resources are already out there for student survivors, but plenty of students don't know about or are unable to get to rape crisis centers. All too often, student survivors are left on their own to figure out what they need to help themselves heal through trauma while also managing their education and everything else that college entails. This is the first step to addressing survivor dropout. This bill is a chance to take action. Organizations like the Every Voice Coalition and our state chapter for Pennsylvania shouldn't have to exist. But because of continued inaction from those in positions of power, we do. I hear from my peers every day on my campus and campuses across the state how crucial this legislation is to them. We are devoting our time and energy to this movement in the hope that together we can guarantee access to the support and protections that student survivors deserve. As we say at EVC, stopping campus sexual violence isn't about school level policy change, it's about structural change through legislative reform. The Yes Means Yes bill, along with the climate survey resolution and the rest of this bill package, provide easy, common sense solutions to prevent sexual violence and help students heal when we were too slow to prevent this. These bills are our next step. In closing, I'd like to thank you all for having me. I'd like to thank the legislators standing by me today and Governor Wolf and It's On Us and PCAR and all of the students who are a part of this movement. Um, and now I'd like to welcome to the podium Donna Greco, Policy Director for the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape. Thank you. My name is Donna Greco. I've been with PCAR for 17 years advocating for victims of sexual assault since I was a college student in Connecticut. I am so inspired by the students here today, by the Every Voice campaign and the time that they're taking to advocate here in Pennsylvania. They are incredibly inspirational advocates. I'm here today representing the network of rape crisis centers that serve all 67 counties of the Commonwealth. I'm so grateful to join the governor and respected colleagues in support of survivors of campus sexual assault. You've heard that right now students across Pennsylvania are getting oriented to life on campus. They should be able to focus solely on settling into new and exciting routines, establishing friendships, making memories, and learning the important skills that they will carry with them throughout their lives. We can all relate to these hopes and dreams that young people have. We as their parents, their family members, friends, teachers, and colleagues get to witness their achievements and see their passions ignite as they begin to envision their futures where someday they will be the leaders in our communities. They already are, as evidenced here today. They'll be working, teaching, innovating, and advocating, making our commonwealth more vibrant in the days ahead. You've also heard, unfortunately, occurring alongside of this time of new beginnings is the reality of sexual assault, dating violence, and stalking on college campuses. And as we stand here today, we know far too many students will have to carry the impacts of sexual assault along with them into their futures. We've made so many strides in Pennsylvania thanks to Governor Wolf's leadership and investment in campus sexual assault prevention and response. We have seen bipartisan-led laws advance in Pennsylvania to support students in reporting sexual assault and protecting their safety on school grounds. Yet, we've heard we still have so much work to do together. College students remain among the most vulnerable populations to be sexually assaulted. We heard that one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted while in college. And we also know, sadly, that sexual violence starts early as Governor Wolf shared. Between ages of 11 and 17, one in three females and one in four males experience rape for the first time. We know that girls and women, black, indigenous, people of color, and LGBTQ students are disproportionately impacted. We've made strides, but we also see that rates of campus sexual assault are persistent and they're not going down since 2015. And while there's promise in seeing more students are aware of how to report sexual assault and get help on their college campuses, less than 15% actually do so. Victims of sexual assault often suffer alone and without the support they need. They're afraid no one will believe them. 
they think the assault was not serious enough or they may worry they just don't have time to go through the process of reporting and getting help. For younger students in K through 12, we know these barriers are even greater due to their age, their stage of development, the interplay of confusion and fear that children experience related to sexual assault. Victims should never have to feel that an exam or a deadline is more important than their well-being and their needs following an assault or that no one in their lives will believe them. Too often we see victims dropping out, their grades going down, and they lose out on opportunities that will allow them to thrive in their lives. But we know with support and resources, victims have a better chance of staying on track, staying in class, connecting to the aspects of campus life that bring them joy and strength and make those wonderful memories. With evidence-based prevention strategies, we can stop sexual violence from happening in the first place. And with a collaborative approach across campuses and community partners, we can help prevent sexual violence from derailing the goals and aspirations of these young people throughout the Commonwealth. For all of these reasons, PCAR is proud to stand here today and support the It's On Us package. You've heard an overview of the legislation and how it will help at the heart of this legislation is collaboration and an understanding that we best serve and protect students when we are all working together across disciplines, across settings. We all play unique and important roles in supporting students. PCAR is grateful to see collaborations with rape crisis and domestic violence centers formalized within this legislation. Rape crisis and domestic violence centers bring confidential, trauma-informed services to students while offering promising prevention strategies like healthy relationships, bystander intervention, mobilizing boys and men, gender equity programs that can make the campus safer. When we are working together, we are a sum greater than our individual parts and students have more options, more resources, more support, and the larger campus is safer. I started my remarks today picturing the excitement, the hopes, and the dreams of Pennsylvanians as they begin new beginnings this fall during their school years. Sexual assault is not a memory any student should have to make, and that is why we're standing here today in support of the It's On Us package. These, these bills will bring us closer to the dream where every student is safe from sexual violence while they pursue wonderful things and successes at school. And we hope you will join us in supporting this legislation. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Governor Wolf back to the podium. Thank you. KB, happy to take questions. Yes. So, uh, of course, the, there have been some work on this legislatively in the past. Can you tell us how receptive are, or rather, is the Republican majority to this package? I, I think the, we, it was a bipartisan effort. And I think, in a sense, this this is also a, there, there is a bipartisan co-sponsorship, at least in some of the bills. Um, again, I think there's a universal recognition that we don't want our daughters, our sons, our sisters, our brothers, to be confronted with this kind of, of violence when they're in school. And and there isn't a family out there who who wants that. And and so this legislation is common sense, practical legislation, just aimed at changing. Uh, the rules to make sure that people know that this is not something that's tolerated, and I think there is—I think there is bipartisan support for it. So I don't—I don't know. Do you have any thought of how? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of yeses here. It's not really a partisan issue. We all have sons and daughters and sisters and brothers. Anything else? All right. All right. Yes. I'm sorry, did you say you thought people were not talking about I'm, I'm sorry, not, not that they were not talking about this, but as far as these legislative proposals, can you talk about why it's happening now and, and sort of the changing attitudes over the years to make it more of a, a issue that people were aware of? 
I, th I think it's been happening, uh, uh, and I, I'm not sure people were talking about it enough. I think it was sort of driven underground like so many other things uh, that, that uh, we want to change in our behavior. We're trying to create a more civil, uh, humane society. Again, uh, I think we recognize issues and challenges that our sons and daughters and brothers and sisters are facing in ways that maybe we didn't decades ago. Uh, I'm not sure we had an open conversation about it. We are now. And I think we are uh, uh, acknowledging that this is an issue and that we can't live in a society where, where many of us, a huge percentage of us, just feel unsafe. Uh, and, and sexual violence, sexual assault is something that makes our children uh, feel unsafe on college campuses. We need them to learn there. We need them to be there to, to be excited about, well, okay, I was in college once. Excitement might not be the right, <laughs> the right learning when you go into a classroom, but, but not to worry about being assaulted. And, and I think that's, that's simply what we're trying to do here. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Great. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>